all right we're in a little different spot today as you can see this is where i work well this is where i work about half the time the other half the time i'm out in the field scouting and soil sampling and everything that's involved with that side of the business but um that's all kind of dead right now because obviously everything's growing and we're get kind of coming to the end of the scouting because we're to the point where everything's kind of the point where it's going to be at so i've been working around here but uh boss has a field he wants to put into alfalfa and it's got a bad mare's tail problem which we'll see here i'll show you here in a minute but uh opted to mall board it that way because it's kind of hard to do your weed control options in alfalfa are rather limited, especially on mare's tail. Um, but they don't have a plow anymore, so he wanted me to come up and do it. So last night I brought the 19 and the 5 bottom up. Um, so, but first things first, I got to grab the skid loader and the grapple. There's a, I drove over there yesterday. It's just... Well, there's a bean field there on top of the hill and we drive around the corner and it, there's another property that butts up to the farm it's over there but i gotta drive the skid steer over and push a tree back real quick so we're gonna go do that
real quick and lay the field out. This has been my project for about the last week's going over that damn thing. Tell you what, I know I know those were good combines. But God, are they a complete pain in the ass to work on. Like, my God. It's like the engineers at Deer went and said, hey, any part that might possibly have to be, you know, a common wear part that might possibly have to be replaced or a f common service part like a filter or something, let's bury it where you can't get to it. Need some flags. Use these old junk ones because I'm just going to bury them. So I know that's getting some good ones. should be enough. All right, so this ain't a super huge field. It might be six acres, maybe. It might be a little bigger than that. It's long, but it gets narrow there in the back, so it's kind of deceiving. Um, so because it's going into hay, I don't want to have a bunch of land, so I'm going to plow this as a back furrow and then these short rows over here, I will probably just plow down and dead and deadhead back and work this off just one just going one way. Maybe we'll see. Maybe I'll plow it to a dead furrow. We'll see how far I end up plowing the long rows because I'm gonna set the long rows up as a back furrow. And what I'm gonna do on my end rows here is I'm gonna pace them off or pace off how far in I'm gonna come and then when I come to, or bring the tractor fuck I didn't realize that telephone pole is right there that's a pain in the ass anyway um and then when I come down here I'll drop the front bottom and scribe a line across the field and then like say that'll be my that'll be like a a reference point and say when my back tire crosses it that's when I'll drop the plow that way we're even all the way across the field and make it easier to finish that way since especially since it's going into hay and you want it level um so let's just say we want 25 foot um figure what roughly three foot three foot per pace so basically what eight paces so one two three four five six seven eight that's not nearly enough let's do nine ten I like that. We'll, we'll go with 10. So we're going to put a flag here. Actually, what I should do, let's go down here. We'll pace off what it is to this telephone pole. I don't know, but then that's going to make it a pain in the ass because I'm going to have to drive around and tell it. Okay, we're, we're going to keep, we're sticking with that. And then we'll walk down here and, and this is about the middle so 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we'll come down here and we'll do one more. All right, I got my flags down the end, I got my flags down that end, and then I got flags running up the center of the long rows to mark my back furrow. Um, I kind of need one more up in here somewhere, so I'm gonna bring some on when I bring the tractor over. But uh, I gotta run into town real quick and get something for the boss, so get that done and then we'll come back here and do some plowing. All right, we're ready to roll some dirt. Um, but the mare's tail issue I was talking about, so this field, he burned it down a couple weeks ago with a full rate of enlist and a full rate of roundup. And enlist will normally smoke the shit out of mare's tail, and basically all it did, as you can see, is piss this stuff off. Like that, there, that right there. That's already got two brand new shoots coming off of it right there, which is a little scary because, like I say, normally... Normally, enlist kills mare's tail. But that's why we opted to mall board plow it. He suggested, or he wanted to, when we drove we drove around out here last week and he asked me what I thought because he was going to chisel plot and I was like, eh-eh. Chisel plows are hands down the greatest tool humans have ever invented to spread weed seed. Because he, he was, he didn't want to no-till it because he's no till he's not had good luck no tilling alfalfa he said he tried to actually thank you if i remember right he said these fields back here because this this is all one farm but this they row cropped and then they there's like there's four fields broken up on that side and uh when they planted that they know they worked this front field and then no till there's a little patch there or right, there's two little patches there on either side of that pond and there's a patch back behind the house and they no-tilled small patches and this came up better the work stuff did so that's why i wanted to work or that's why he wanted to work it and that's why we opted to mall board it to take care of this mall, or take care of this mare's tail issue at least until the alfalfa gets far enough ahead to keep it choked out but I got another flag and put a flag on because I couldn't see from my first flag to my second flag initially because of that hill. So now I got enough flags that I can actually see where I gotta go. So I'm gonna drive down to the end here and we're gonna whip around and I'm gonna put the flag or my flag for my mark, marker track underneath the front tire. Like I say, I'll just drop the front of the plow and make a scratch mark with the front mall boards. We got something to, something to follow. I guess I can put you back here so you can see what's going on.
Well, um, as you can see, the field is done being plowed. Um, what you guys may not know is you just spent about the last, oh, four hours buried six inches underground. Um, I had this, I had the camera sitting on the fender of the tractor, wasn't even thinking about it. And next thing I know, I was like halfway up the field and I looked back at the fender. I was like, well, that's not good. Couldn't find the camera. Um, so at that point I figured it was fucking gone. <laughs> and uh, technically it was. Because I looked around, I thought it happened over there because there's a tree over there that the branches were right level with the fender. I thought it happened over there. So I've been looking over there for like the last 35 minutes and I couldn't find nothing, couldn't find nothing because that metal detector, I was going to call it a piece of shit, but it just found the camera so I can't knock it too hard. But it's a $99 Amazon special. And so far I've never been able to find shit with it. Well, I got lucky today and I managed to find the camera. I never figured I would find this thing in a million years. You were, you were buried. You were, you were right, you were right here. Right there under that tree root. My God, I can't believe I managed to find you guys. Here, I was all worried I was have to go home and spend like $200, probably more than that, because I would have lost the camera, the battery, my big SIM card, and my mount. All in one shebang. What are the odds? Like an eight, ten acre field, and I, I find my camera with a metal detector. Holy shit. You guys have no idea how happy that makes me right now because I did not want to spend that money. <laughs> not that it's going to hurt me none. I just really didn't want to spend the money right now. But anyway, as you can see, the field's done. Um, I It it plowed pretty damn good. Um I actually back here on this hill had to hold the plow up out of the ground because it's as, as you can see it's I mean this is that's a sandy loam heavy on the sand and you get back here well about where the crest of that hill is the plow would try to go to China this would have been a good field to have gauge wheel on the plow because you get it plowing about right up front by the road which has got a lot of, lot more clay in it and then the minute it, it's like a line you drive out of that clay and then the plow would instantly drop about four inches and then the further back you get the the ground's a little bit got more red in it up there and then it kind of gets more white back in here so the further back you get in this field the more sand it gets in it but this is my back furrow. You can't hardly, you can't hardly tell it's even here. The only reason I know it's here is because for some reason when I'm doing a back furrow, that plow, the back bottom likes to dig a deeper furrow and then you have a hard time filling it on your next pass. And then from there on out, you, you plow level. So it's easy to find my back furrow, but it's nice and level. All, right, all in all, well, we can we can drive up front, but all in all, this field plowed really good. Um, tomorrow, I'll actually I might just go ahead and bring you guys back up so you can see the disc in part. I put the he's got a little he's got a 14 foot deer disc and a uh, I think a 16 foot. It's either a 16 or an 18 foot crumbler. I know the crumbler's too big for the disc, but. That's what he's got. Put it behind the 4450 and come over here and diss this. But, uh, yeah, let's drive up front. Teeter, come on. Up, up. Let's go for a ride. We're done here. Normally, I had a hard time plowing the ends. Normally, when I would do a, do a dead furrow on the edge of the field, I would feather the back bottom so you're only cutting in you know yay deep just enough to lay the shit over in your in the end of the furrow of bottom number four but the tree roots are growing so far out in this damn field i tried doing it and i couldn't do it because the four and five would ball up on tree roots and just plug the plow so if i wasn't sunk all the way on the ground moving enough dirt to keep the plow clear all i'd do is plug up so but his disc has got cone blades on it so i should be able to fill the furrows in fairly easy teeter come on Let's go. Let's go for a ride.
Come on. You walking? But I ended up doing kind of what I said. I plowed the long rows into a back furrow and that got me to Where's the first one where I came back from the front? That got me to this furrow right here. And then I started, I had to drive over some ground here to finish up this little sliver. And then I plowed the front to a dead furrow, plowed these short rows into a dead furrow. having to drive over my plowed ground it makes my plowed ground my nice flat plowed ground look like hell because of the tire tracks but there ain't a whole lot you can do about it because you got to finish your end rows up but here is what was the back furrow or the dead furrow but i back plowed it already so that's nice and level so and this field right here is what that 575 was made for nice light ground with lots of rocks down at your plow layer because i think i caught it on camera a few times but there was rocks right right at the bottom of where i was plowing and i was tripping bottoms left and right but i wasn't pulling any rocks up on top which perfect for a hay field and then I don't know why, I don't know if it's something left over from building the road or what, but the end rows up there along the road, damn, there was a lot of, lot of rocks. I think there was some concrete because every time there was a couple of ones I struck that rolled dust or that rolled like concrete dust out of the ground. So I don't know if there was a farmhouse here back in the day or what, but anyhow. Sorry I didn't get more plowing video, but it's kind of hard to do when you guys are taking a nap in the dirt, so. But I found the camera, so I don't got to spend any money, and you guys still get a video tonight, so that worked out pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to get the ranger back to the farm, and I already I ran the 19 home and had Dad bring me back up here, so I'm going to go home and service the plow, and I'm, I don't know if I'm going to paint the bottoms or not, because I'm going to use it again but uh go home and get everything taken care of so i guess that's it for this one and we'll catch you guys on the next one luckily not having to get a new camera so what do you think teeter <laughs>